Today on the Pro-Life Podcast, picking up from last week, we're talking with Catherine Glenn Foster about is the left losing their leadership in the Supreme Court and the attack of the army of Karens. Sounds like a post-apocalyptic movie or something, but hey, let's get started. Well, happy Tuesday, everyone. We're doing this again. I'm joined by my favorite people, Karen, 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 our special guest, Karen, <laughs> and I am your host, apparently also Karen. With a beard. With a beard. Hey, <laughs> hey, what is a woman? <laughs> what is a woman? Speaking of, we found out a uh, certain left-leaning Supreme Court nominee uh, isn't a biologist. So... How do we feel like this is kind of shifting the landscape of the court? All right. So we'll get to why we're all named Karen in a minute, allegedly. Um, <laughs> but right now, what's going on is we've got the uh, nomination hearings going on for Ketanji Brown Jackson, who is Biden's Supreme Court a nominee to the um, United States Supreme Court. And so, Catherine, I wanted to see you shared some insight to share some insight with us about what this retirement um, at SCOTUS and what the nominee, uh, the nomination, what does that mean for the court as a whole? Like, what, what do you read into this? Yeah, um, it doesn't really matter who President Biden's nominee was. Um, anyone on his short list, sure, they're qualified. Sure, they're distinguished. Um, and, you know, they meet all of his qualifications. Um, we may take exception to some of their stances, um, such as on the life issue. But what's most important here really may be the fact that all of these are neophytes. They are not leaders in the way that Justice Breyer is, in the way that Justice Ginsburg was. These um, Justices Ginsburg and Breyer, they were tested leaders. They were um, you know, the, the most ardent, staunch defenders of leftist principles and the so-called abortion right mm -hmm. on the court. And so to have both of those justices gone within one year, and in the case of Justice Breyer, pretty rudely, um, he was essentially kicked out, um, he was pressured out by leftist groups that drove an actual billboard truck around the Supreme Court, circling the court last spring with this message, Breyer, retire. I mean, oh my! you just you Yikes. think about that and think about a sitting Supreme Court justice being booed off the stage by supposed allies, uh, the people that he had been defending mm. and and supporting and writing opinions um, that they liked for decades. And here they say, nope, it's your time to go um, just because they're worried about the outcome of the 2022 elections. Wait, so they're trying wow. to push him out early before, like, just while Democrats have control? Right, of the okay. Senate, exactly. So in a way that makes sense, but if your big concern is the 2022 elections, then maybe that's what you should be focused on, yeah. right? <laughs> and of yeah. pushing out well, right. somebody who already supports you. An ally, someone who's yeah, how pretty old is healthy. He? If they were worried about his yeah. health, because uh, a lot of people were worried about uh, Justice Ruth Ginsburg, she was getting mm -hmm. very old. They were, right. they were kind of suggesting that she should retire mm -hmm. so that... Uh, the president could nominate someone before she died. Right. Well, of course, that didn't happen. They didn't so want that to, to happen. That they Breyer. didn't want that to happen during Trump's presidency, mm -hmm. though. Mm -hmm. So I think they must have learned a lesson because uh, Justice Ginsburg wanted to retire, kind of thought about retiring whenever Obama was in office, but then everybody assumed that Hillary Clinton was gonna win the 2016 election. Mm -hmm. So I think that the left was just expecting, okay, she will retire when uh, Hillary Clinton is president. And that did not happen. And then it ended up, she ended up passing away, unfortunately, during uh, Trump's administration. And luckily, uh, Trump was able to nominate a good justice in her mold. So I guess they've learned their lesson from that. In a way, yes, but I think it's the wrong lesson. We have, um, uh, for them, you know, for our side, it's a win, so I'll, I'll take it. But, you know, praise God. But we had a Supreme Court justice who's younger than the president, someone who was a hmm. staunch defender of abortion rights, which obviously they like and they wanted more of. And so to just rudely take one of the 
the nine most learned, respected jurists in our entire nation and just say like, you're out of here. It's your time to go. It's it, it's it really shows how unbelievable. Extreme they are. Well, you mm-hmm. know what strikes out to me yeah. about that? It, the double standard. Okay. Right. That that anytime we are talking about, oh, you know, actually abortion's not in the constitution. Um, oh, actually, maybe being human, you actually have human rights. That's mm-hmm. politicizing the court. But mm-hmm. driving billboards and trying to right. force somebody mm-hmm. out. Because That's not politicizing the court. Yeah. That is just yeah. decorum. That is <laughs> at its finest. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> That's just being polite, I guess. Yeah. Like, no, yeah. no, you don't drive a truck around somebody's wow. uh, place of work and exactly. tell them, get out of here. Exactly. And it just shows a lack of, of really, I think, care and empathy mm-hmm. and respect for human life. And mm-hmm. it all goes back to the same core principles because I disagree with Justice Breyer on a whole number of issues, mm-hmm. but that doesn't mean that I would boo him off the stage. Right. I would. I would support him and just try to talk with him and share with him and attempt to try to sway his viewpoint. I wouldn't say, you know, you're out of here. You're too old. You're no longer worth our time. Hmm. So they're basically they've booed Justice Breyer off the stage. Justice Breyer was a Democrat appointed judge. Now we've got his replacement being confirmed, Ketanji Brown Jackson. How will that change the court and how will that not change the court? Yeah, um, we've seen a number of shifts on the Supreme Court in the last few years. Um, we saw the departure of Justice Kennedy and his replacement. He was a you know a centrist, um, intellectually gifted. We saw his replacement with a similarly gifted but more conservative um, replacement, Justice Kavanaugh. We saw um, Justice Ginsburg, of course. Replaced by um, by Justice Amy Coney Barrett, we've seen um, just all of these these shifts to where um, to where a more liberal justice is being replaced by a more conservative justice. And then in the case of a conservative justice and their loss, as in the case of Justice Scalia, um, he was replaced by a very ideologically similar. Um, Justice Gorsuch. So when you look at at the shifts there, the two major um, liberals on the court were replaced by conservatives. The conservative loss replaced by another conservative. And here we have, yes, a liberal replaced by another liberal. But we're talking about um, a liberal who is new to the court, who doesn't have the same skills in, um, in leadership, it seems, or in consensus building. Um, she may well get there, you know, but she doesn't have that now. And we are at such a critical time that to lose both of the court's um, strongest members of the liberal bench, Justices Ginsburg and then Breyer, is um, is almost unthinkable from their side. It's, it's really surprising that they would think that this is a good plan. They're sacrificing leadership for longevity. And that's a grave miscalculation. You look at, at Chief Justice Roberts, and no matter what you think of his opinions, we have to recognize his leadership ability. Shortly after his elevation to um, to the court, he was able to broker the first unanimous abortion decision in as long as anyone could remember. Over and over, he has tried to build consensus, show true leadership, and that is simply going to be lacking coming from the left at this point. What are the effects of that then? Okay, so you said that the left needs these leaders on the Supreme Court because they are in the majority. There's only three liberal justices and there are six conservative justices. Why do they need that kind of leadership there in the minority? What's going to happen? Well, first of all, they need to coalesce around one set of principles, right? And then also, if they had true leadership, then they would be able to build that consensus. They would be able to try to to bring more and more of the more conservative justices over to their side. The data is clear that um, generally, justices on the bench become uh, a little bit more liberal over time. So it's certainly possible, there's numerous studies to that effect, but it's certainly possible that during any justice's time on the bench, they might be able to be swayed over on at least some cases. Uh, If they don't have that strong leadership on the liberal side, then their ability to bring people over is going to be weakened. Their ability to um, to shape the kind of consensus building uh, opinions is going to be weakened. And frankly, I, I just don't think that justices Kagan or Sotomayor have shown themselves to have the kind of 
um, of leadership that the left has lost in Ginsburg and is losing with Justice Breyer. Wow. So basically, I mean, they're eating their own, mm-hmm. uh, which at least for the time being is going to be favorable for our side for a while. Yep. So I'm kind of fine with that. <laughs> It seems to really uh, just be a symptom of everything the left is experiencing lately. They're fragmenting themselves over and over again. They have uh, contradicting talking points on the same issue all the time. And so hearing you, I I never would have known it, this about the about Stephen Breyer's uh, leadership. So it's really interesting to hear you say that. Mm-hmm. Also, how unbiased you are and how thoughtful about all this. Yeah. But also just how, wow, this is yet another symptom of the left fracturing itself. Mm-hmm. And um, maybe this is even a bigger opportunity for the for the right for for good Christian people mm-hmm. to say, come come over right. here, Opposite. come join us. We yeah. are not fragmented. Yeah. Yes, we are whole, and we have the truth. Come over here. Yeah, yeah. Well, okay, but devil's advocate here. Mm-hmm. How do we think this plays out in a long game move? Mm-hmm. Like she's going to be in that seat for a while. It's true. Mm-hmm. What's after confirmation? Pending confirmation. I know it's going to be a few more days that happens, but are we thinking long game? This is the plan, or I mean, obviously, short term. They've only traded one player for another with less abilities. It seems right. Long game on our side. Sure, she'll be on the on the court for a long time to come. Um, but you look at Justices Sotomayor or Kagan again, you know, we're not seeing that leadership ability coming from them. Again, I, I can't make any prediction on Judge Jackson and how she may develop on the court. I can only look at how Justices Kagan and Sotomayor have developed on the court. And, um, you know, short of all nine seats going our way, which um, I'm not expecting in the next couple of years. Um, we had to know that she was um, that Justice Breyer was going to be replaced by um, a, a, a fairly liberal, if not as liberal, judge. This is not a surprise. The critical part here is just the leadership ability and how that is going to shift. So even if Judge potentially future justice um, Jackson, you know, does end up being that leader that Justice Ginsburg was even, which I'm not sure that she will. You know, she doesn't have the same um, history in that area as a as a Justice Ginsburg did, um, but she certainly may. Even if that happens, um, we're talking about, you know, years in the future right. and, um, and nonetheless, a pretty... Uh, fractured and um, and inconsistent, I would say, left side of the bench. That is a very charitable way of putting it, I gotta say. <laughs> yeah, it just it's gonna make the left side a hot. I'm imagining infighting. I'm imagining uh, contradicting dissent. I'm imagining all kinds of interesting things. Oh, who knows? <laughs> That's crazy. Something that I watched during the hearings too is that early on in the hearings, she said that. Um, she was asked, when does life begin? When do you think life begins? And she could not provide an answer. She kind of started to, and then she stopped herself. And it's one of those things that's just like, this is a very simple question Mm -hmm. that people should be mindful of. And the fact that she can't or won't answer that is alarming. Mm -hmm. We'll even hazard a guess. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Cool. Well, before we get to our next topic of conversation, why we're all apparently a bunch of Karens, um, we have some other important information to share with you. And Nathan, uh, (laughs) I know, I'm tossing it to Nathan again. He's looking at me like, bro, what are you doing? Nathan, do your thing, man. (laughs) Texas Right to Life is facing 14 lawsuits from Planned Parenthood and the abortion industry. They're suing us because we helped pass the Texas Heartbeat Act. And they're trying to scare us pro-lifers into backing down. Please join us in the fight against Planned Parenthood and donate to protect the Texas Heartbeat Act. You can fight for the unborn and build a pro-life Texas that values every human life. Go to texasrighttolife.com slash lawsuit to make your contribution. Every cent will help and it's greatly appreciated. Texas led the charge for a historic year in the pro-life movement. Now is the time to celebrate. Join us April 23rd for the annual San Antonio Celebration of Life. 
You'll have a blast meeting other pro-life advocates, hearing success stories from college students on the front lines, and getting an exclusive inside look at the next steps of the pro-life movement. Go to texasrighttolife.com slash events to get your tickets. We can't wait to see you April 23rd in San Antonio. Well, welcome back to The Karen Show. Um, thank you, Nathan, for dropping that important information in there. Um, <laughs> his name is Karen, okay? Name, okay. We're all well, Karen. Uh, yes. Sorry for the inconsistency. We are all Karen today, and we're going to get to why. Um, so there was an article in Salon, apparently. <laughs> we just love Salon. Uh, yeah, so I, this, it it's could news have been, to me. I don't. I didn't. Never heard of these guys before. It could have been written this. by Planned Parenthood themselves. Like Salon is just. I mean, a lot of media is just like leftist propaganda, but Salon especially. Uh, you want to so, tell us what, what hit the basics, well, Brent? Well, well, just the title kind of says it all. An army of Republican Karens are fighting to end legal abortion in the U.S. So apparently we are an army of Republican Karens. I guess so. I have to say my favorite thing about this article, everyone please find it on, uh, I guess we'll put it in the description. My favorite thing, first off, whenever you click on it, the picture is of this pro-life activist who, if you know her, her name is Teresa, and she is a pro-life atheist, progressive, like lives in California, feminist. She probably agrees with this author on almost every issue. Except abortion. Except abortion. She's pro-life. Yes. Side note, she's also my best friend. What? Yes. <laughs> so ah, I have crazy. not read wow. spoiler, I've not read this article, but yeah, very exciting. She actually just moved to DC just a few months ago. Tell but her. founded Pro Life San Francisco. Is um, she a Karen? I'm gonna say no. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, she is the furthest. In an article titled, like, we're all an army of Republican Karens. She is not a Republican. So yeah. like you already like we're already starting off on a great foot here, which makes me just adore this article so much of like their grasp on reality well, is real. You should send this to Teresa later. I absolutely <laughs> will. She's going to be so excited. Oh, I, I wonder if anybody's like tweeted at her. Hey, you're on the cover of this article. Did you know that you're a Karen and you're a Republican? Yeah. We can yeah. bring her in as a special guest for this podcast. <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah. FaceTime her in. I just reading this thing over. I just thought it was the most ironic thing that this is this is literally the most Karen rant I've read in a while. That's what I thought like, too. <laughs> this is other than posting this on Facebook and tagging some people, like this feels like the most Karen-esque bring me the manager here yeah. Yeah. rant okay. here. Wait, the the whole like thesis of this article here is that a Republican state representative from Missouri named Mary Elizabeth Coleman authored a pro-life bill that would ban interstate travel to get an abortion. And so they're just so upset that most of the people who are authoring pro-life bills are women. Mm -hmm. And they're like, well, in the past, we always said this was internalized misogyny, but we need to call it for what it is, externalized misogyny. These women are Karens. <laughs> Yeah, they list dozens of women, and their whole claim is that these women actually hate women. And I'm like, I think you're misinterpreting this. I think what you meant to say is that women are pro-life. Maybe they're getting it wrong. Well, it's so <laughs> funny to see like how they keep changing the argument. They always said, we're the religious ones. We're making all the religious arguments. We get up and we talk about the law and the medicine and the facts and so on. And you see their side and it'll be like, oh, we're, you know, Catholics for choice. We're whatever. Yeah. And then here, <laughs> you know, apparently it used to be men, you know, old white men who were trying to prohibit abortion or, you know, protect life as we would call it. And then when they yeah, find out, yeah, when they find out it's not all old white men, they're like, what do we say to that? Yeah, we're I guess internalized we're Karens. misogynists yes. or yes. externalized now. Yes. Yeah, I'm just a, apparently misogynist yeah. male and y'all are externalized, internalized. It's the, all the, the it. goalposts yeah. are all, moving here. Yeah. So it's like, okay, you white men can't have abortion bills. Okay, now only women can have a say. Okay, now women have a say, and it's like, oh, that's not the opinion we wanted them to have. So <laughs> now they call us anti-choice Karens, and they say anti-choice Karens like to pretend they're just in this to protect other women. There's heavy use of the phrases, as a mother, 
And women yeah. deserve better than abortion. Yes, as a mother, that's, that's, that's exactly yeah. why. Well, exactly, I know what this feels like. We have some white experience yeah. uh, as a person with a womb. Yes. Oh my gosh! <laughs> and like birthing taking, person, as a birthing person. <laughs> oh. And they're taking, you know, exception to, uh, you know, the phrase "and women deserve better than abortion." What is not? Right about that statement. What what is false about that statement? Yeah, absolutely. Well, it's because they celebrate abortion. It's almost become a rite of passage now. It's no longer, you know, safe, legal, and rare. Mm-hmm. It just became like safe and legal, and now it's on demand, and then it's celebrated. Well, it, it's I just a celebra- apology. I have a better yeah. celebration. It's called birthdays. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah that's way yes. better. There you go. <laughs> yeah. Just for context here, like the point that you guys were getting at a second ago about how like this sounds like the most Karen rant that a Karen could ever do. This is like boss level Karen. Uh, So I have a theory. I have a proposition that the only people who still use the phrase Karen are Karens themselves. They are internalized Karens or maybe externalized Karens. They are uber Karens. This, the phrase Karen has been pretty dead in meme culture. I'm an award winning oh. meme creator. Oh my God, actually. <laughs> She's really yes, good at making meme. For another time. I do, thank you. So, um, Karen has been like a pretty dead phrase for a couple of years in meme culture. It was popular whenever the pandemic first started and it's like a Karen is somebody who has like, who always wants to talk to the manager, thinks she knows Mm -hmm. about stuff that she doesn't actually know about. This sounds like boss level Karen, as I said, like Mm -hmm. this is an internalized Karen. Uh, I can't remember this author's name. It's um, Amanda. Amanda. Amanda, oh, Sink- uh-huh. and she's attacking okay. mm-hmm. dozens of other women in this article yes. right. over and over yes. again, naming these women uh, by mm. name and saying that they're terrible people well, and that basically they should give their their woman card back. I yeah. guess yeah. so. Uh, like, I, I mean, I, I feel bad for all the Karens out there. I, know. I, I, I actually, I know. I do have a T-shirt though from the beginning of the pandemic, um, made by a friend um, who's pro-life, but it says "Embryo is not a species, Karen." Yes. Um, I like that quite That's a lot. Fantastic. Yeah, love it. we should send That's that fun. to Amanda here. Yes. Yeah. It. Now, in here, oh, yeah. it calls. She's, they say Amanda says. In reality, of course, these Republican women are sadists, which is evident in their opposition to health care and the adequate child care necessary to have the babies they wish to force on other women. I'm oh. sorry. I'm sorry. What? Veronica. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> I oppose health care and child and care. child care. Yes. Oh, I love child care. I'm obsessed <laughs> with both. <laughs> I mean, as a yes, dad, please. I'm I, I appreciate child care. care. Yeah, yeah, we do. You're volunteering. <laughs> let me know. So uh, <laughs> my point was, Veronica, what do our anti-choice carers running around on uh, college campuses do for pregnant and parenting students? Oh, gosh. Like, yeah. uh, hey, if only they're like passing out free condoms mm-hmm. with pancakes, and the pro-life students are saying, "Sign up for our babysitting club." And I'm like, "Which one is better? <laughs> Which one is more pro-woman here?" <laughs> yeah. You know, yeah. they're providing scholarships yeah. for students who choose life and want to continue their education and yeah the pro-choice students mm-hmm. are often literally yelling in megaphones and throwing condoms right there that's was what? Yeah. there were yeah. I mean that's what a Karen would do that's what I'm saying <laughs> yeah. I think yeah. you need to look internally Amanda like are you the Karen ask yourself this but we have look in the mirror yes we have these uh, pro-life scholarship programs for pregnant and parenting students mm-hmm. and the pro-choice students at UT Austin, right, were tearing the flyers down and it's like, oh wait, was that at UT yeah, Austin? Yeah, it was UT Austin, okay. yeah. Mm-hmm. And it's like, yeah. hmm, that sounds pro-choice of you. Yeah, mm-hmm. there was a flyer that literally said, you know, apply to receive a scholarship for young parents at school and uh, they, the pro-choice students were furious because this was pro- posted by the pro-life group. Of course And they so, were. of course, anything that a pro-life group do does must be tainted. Mm-hmm. And um, yeah, actually, Coercion. it reminds me. <laughs> yes, co- you must be coerced into free child care. So, um, I... No, I, <laughs> no, I, no. I don't need to be coerced into free child care. I 
have three kids <laughs> and I love childcare. But um, <laughs> no, this reminds me of another story of um, actually when I was a student at a and it feels like a million years ago. I'm a lot older than I look. I um, <laughs> we uh, we were having a 5K fundraiser for our pregnant and parenting student scholarship, and the pro-choice group caught wind of it, and they decided that they were going to have a fundraiser too, uh, for a scholarship for pro-choice students. And we were like, oh my god, are they going to pay for abortions? Mm-hmm. Turns out they weren't even that clever. They didn't think about paying for an abortion. They were just going to give it to someone who was like really pro-choice. Because, so one of them. however, like a whoever can write the best pro choice essay essentially was mm-hmm. going to get a scholarship. Turns out everybody thought that was a stupid idea, so they shut it down. Good. And then they were like, well, instead, yeah. how about we just protest the 5K? So we were like ready to go, had some a few extra police there at the 5K just mm-hmm. in case things got weird. But we were like, how can you protest a fundraiser to help pregnant moms and dads? Literally, they're pushing their strollers mm-hmm. wow. in the 5K. Yeah. So we were like, this is going to be weird. What are they? protesting and so finally uh the day came and they posted the pro-choice group posted on their own twitter feeds and so well this was pre-twitter it was like facebook groups um and so they posted on there like hey just kidding we're not actually gonna do this after all and i was like oh yeah you're not because how can you protest mom's pushing strollers in a 5k it's not a good look no (laughs) that's some bad optics (laughs) hilarious i'm holding a sign screaming at a lady pushing a stroller (laughs) Yeah. That, no, yeah. no. That's pro woman, I gotta awesome. tell ya. That's awesome. That's not That's how awesome. you make friends and influence people right there. No. I'm just so sick of the nonsensical attacks. Like, even you setting aside the things that are like violent and wishing like harm and death on us. And that's its own set of of problems. But you have groups like, you know, ProLies.org and NARAL. And they ProLies.org? just- ProLies.org? Yes. Um, like pro-life, but pro-lies, oh, wow. obviously. Yeah, it's okay. very clever. Um, so there's like groups like that, that, you know, have a little um, profile up of all the organizations and all the people. And there's NARAL, and they try to like make these maps where they connect all the different groups. And they suspect that sometimes we may meet even, which <laughs> oh would be gosh. shocking <laughs> because we like people and we like each other and we like to celebrate life. Yeah, I mean, I who could believe it? Um, but they have things like that and they have all these, I, I know one time on Twitter, um, I got called by some group, uh, a meddling granny, oh. which um, I appreciated. <laughs> I thought that was fun, I'm not a granny um, uh, yet anyway. Uh, but yeah, I mean, things like that. They actually made a baseball card of me. There's like baseball wow. cards of pro life. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Well, set. Yeah, I know. Awesome. What? I know. That's like the blue check mark version of being pro life. I want to be on a yeah. baseball card. <laughs> <one day. laughs> what do I got to do to get on a baseball card of pro life miss? <laughs> what do you mean? It's the Lila Rose. <laughs> baseball card, guys. <laughs> Seagull's new career goal. Yeah. 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 First career goal was getting sued by Planned Parenthood. Next mm-hmm. is to be on a baseball card. It's true. So <laughs> trolls, if you're listening, please do us a favor. We got to keep up with Catherine's swag here. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it. my God. Crazy. So my next favorite part of this article is that it says uh, women, so in Republican circles, Mm -hmm. women are largely shut out of having much real power. And so the Republican men are only too happy to let the public face of misogyny be a female one. So basically uh, our Republican men are telling us, you know, what to think because we can't think for ourselves because that's that's really a pro-woman thing to say is that we all just came. (laughs) <laughs> we, we are just really doubling down on this thing here of uh, we just came to our beliefs. We had to have, we didn't think for ourselves in this. Or She's that we been, hold no power. Right. No, I, I hold lots of power. I was going to say, <laughs> does, does our local party chair have a comment on such things? I mean, right. let's just take a second and recognize the boss ladies that we have right here. Like, if you want to talk about like, oh, these women, um, wait, here we go. Uh, these women often snatch power by playing, play acting feminine, helpless, often crying or acting 
scared in order to keep the upper hand. I was like, oh, that is nice. devious. Yeah. Wow. That's like gone with the wind Does era. Does everyone <laughs> remember the <laughs> Me Too movement? Like hashtag Me Too? That, th- th- one of their yes. talking points was that we should never talk to a woman like that or treat exactly. her like that because, because she needs to be trusted and believed. And yet here <laughs> is a person writing about how women are lying, crying, acting helpless. I'm like, what? happened in the last well, few yeah. years. Veronica is oh, never helpless, I assure you. <laughs> <laughs> Look out! Well, I mean, since then, we can't define what a woman is anymore. Oh, that's now. the problem. Like, it's, it's, yeah. Everybody accidentally that. burned their dictionaries. So that's why everybody's <laughs> struggling. <laughs> like, that's what that Kindle book update was. But saying we can't think for ourselves or feel yeah. for our, like our emotions are not valid. I feel like Amanda's been reading Planned Parenthood v. Casey and the whole reliance interest mm, thing. Yeah, you know, totally. that, you know, we can't fend for ourselves in a world without men and without abortion. We are yeah. in her in her worldview that we really are the handmaids. Yeah. That's the scary thing. We're not, yeah. obviously, <laughs> but yeah. but that's what she seems to think here. It's like the abortion abortion is supposed to be the great equalizer between right. men and women, and mm-hmm. that's tragic. We don't need abortion to compete with men. We don't need to compete with women or men. We're just yeah. just be strong individuals. We got yeah. this. Yeah, <laughs> it makes sense to me. Yeah. Well, you're a man. What do you I know? know. <laughs> yeah, that's true. I'm sorry, Karen. I'll just keep my mouth shut over here. It's my no. But <laughs> now they're doing this 180 because they've told men to shut up out of ab- shut up right. about abortion for so long, right. and now they're like, oh shoot, like. No, we need men in the abortion conversation. We need them to, you know, fight for abortion rights. And it's like, wait a second. But here's they just basically were playing the we don't need men. So. I don't know. Amanda, please explain. The we're so confused. The is bad here. Yeah. And this got on a major publication, too. Uh-huh. Like, this is not somebody's blog. Yeah. Salon is highly read. Yeah. Uh, Including it's funny. by me. Oh, yeah. I, I like a lot of their stuff, not this. Um, <laughs> this is a little bit off base. This is really entertaining. Not yeah. informative, but entertaining. Yeah. I, it's a good humor piece. Yeah. I think it's mm-hmm. just, again, uh, what's very similar to what I was thinking earlier. It's a symptom of the left cognitive dissonance. There are mm-hmm. fragmented mentalities, they're mm-hmm. contradicting talking points. And uh, because she just made, what, like four, five, six different contradicting talking points about Mm -hmm. how men and women uh, basically are equal or not equal. Mm -hmm. And and she can't make up her mind which one's true. And it's like, come on over here. The water's nice. You don't have to live in this cesspool of (laughs) cognitive dissonance. And other things. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. Well, you like that, Bryn? <laughs> That's my new catchphrase. That's cool. <laughs> Talking to dissonance. <laughs> now, I, but you know what? Also, I um, every time I hear shenanigans like this, it just makes me really, really grateful uh, to to know that God is with us. Mm-hmm. Like, if I'm going to go down that rabbit hole, like we're all Christian, that that's what we need the most. And I can't mm-hmm. help but go back to that. Um, no leader is ever going to save us from this cesspool of cognitive dissonance. <laughs> no one is, and no one can can. No law is going to be enough. No Supreme Court case is going to be enough. No um, Amy Coney Barrett is going to be enough. Even mm-hmm. though these are all good things, this is not actually the answer. It's yeah. God. It's all a symptom. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. of our disease, of our need for Him. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well said. Thank you. Yeah. I'm a bit of a Jesus freak. <laughs> really? Yeah. You're among friends, Karen. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, boss. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay, well, I think we've had enough lady-sponsored misogyny for one day, according to Amanda. Um, so, yeah, I guess thank you, Catherine, for joining yeah, us. This has you. been a fantastic uh, two episodes that we've been able to squeeze out fear- here with our time <laughs> together. Um, Brent, what do we have to wrap us up? Well, what you have, the San Antonio Celebration of Life is coming up April 23rd. Tickets are still available. We'll put the link in the description below. So if you're in the San Antonio area, most of us will be there. I'm sorry. Are you? We'll miss you. I can come back. You could. Yeah, you could come back. Yes. It's you have enough time to plan. It's the twenty third <laughs> of April, so we could do this all again. Maybe Ooh. in person. That'd be crazy. Ooh, that'd be fun. Hey. Remember, Ooh. Texas is God's country. It's yes. Yes. It is. I think it is. Well, thank you for coming to visit God's country. 
And Always we'll a do pleasure. This again. Yes. Yes. Until we can do this again. We love you guys. Thank you so much for watching and listening and subscribing and liking and sharing and all those amazing things. We could not do this without your support. Go out there, share this information, change some hearts and minds and save some lives, save the world. Have a great day. We'll see you next time.